Today, I'm going to take you up to see the Carillon at Bryn Mawr Presbyterian Church. It's a beautiful day, it's Sunday morning. I just finished watching the virtual service and there is where we are going. Well, we have to get up to the tower, so let's start counting steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, that's not bad. So now we enter the choir loft. This wonderful view from up here. Gosh, I've been here 38 and a half years and I still don't get tired of this view. Now, where were we? 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Hmm, okay, lights. Always hard to find the lights here. There we go. Ah, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 36, 36. This room doesn't look very interesting. The lights don't seem to work in here, but um, behind that door is, are all the uh, gizmos that run the sound system and control um, the technology of the church. This room uh, used to be the music library. What you can't see uh, is that there still are huge shelves back there. All right, where were we? I've lost track. Okay, now the main tower. We go through this bird cage these wonderful old steps. Most Carolinaers come here and say they've never seen a cleaner tower. I'm not sure I agree with that. This room is interesting. This was where the church's first organ was housed. Again, there's no light, but the organ was in this space and spoke through a tone chute in the roof of the church. All right, back to the tower. Lots of things to create. Diversions on the way up to this wonderful carillon. Almost there. And great, we are there. Now, if we continued, these steps go all the way up to the roof. It's incredible. These last stairs are a little bit terrifying, frankly, so I don't go up there much. But once you're up there, you can see Center City. Now, we enter the Carillon room, and here we are. Get some light. Now I can look through these grates down into the parking lot. I hope you can see this. There's my car clear down there. Rebecca's house. And up here, this fantastic Carillon. That bell the largest bell is about the same size as the Liberty Bell, and uh, it weighs several thousand pounds. The bells are made of bronze. The Carillon was designed in 2004, built in Holland specifically for this church. I had the privilege of flying to Holland for a two-day meeting. It's the shortest trip I've ever made to Europe two-day meeting to design the Carillon, which was a little bit terrifying because I didn't really know much about Carillons. This uh, structure is solid steel. What was so remarkable about this is that it turns out that the church originally meant to have bells and that wood panel up there is actually the original bell hatch from the late 20s. Um, the church planned to have bells, but the money wasn't there. 
So that um, hatch, uh, which is carved out of, oh my gosh, and maybe a foot of solid concrete that's up there in the tower being supported by steel, that hatch determined the size of the largest bell. So that's kind of interesting. Um, this carillon has 49 bells, which makes it one of the largest carillons in the country. The largest has more than 70 bells. In Philadelphia, there are carillons at the Valley Forge Chapel, a very beautiful carillon there. There's a carillon at Germantown Methodist. There is one at St. Thomas White Marsh Episcopal. And there's a small carillon uh, in Center City at Holy Trinity Rittenhouse Square. That's actually under 20 bells, so technically it's, uh, I believe it's called a chime, not a carillon. Now you can see, these are the little bells, and they're beginning to oxidize with age, which doesn't do anything at all um, bad to the bells. They, they, lo they lost their original patina, but they still sound fantastic. The bottom three octaves of the carillon can be played electronically. Um, we have a control board downstairs. That allows us um, to have the carillon play every 15 minutes to strike the quarter hour. And on the hour, it can play the Westminster uh, chimes, a very famous pattern that is heard on bells all over the world. We have, uh, initially the carillon was just those three octaves and the donor of the carillon was so excited about it, uh, he asked whether we could add more bells and I called Holland and the answer was, you can fit 12 more bells. So we now have all the bells that we can possibly have in here. Now, these bells are played mechanically. And let's get the light switch in here. So this is the playing console. And it doesn't look anything like a piano. Although, look, there are pedals. Isn't that fantastic? So one of the things that we had to decide, these are called, not keys, but batons. And you can see it was made at the Royal Bell Foundry, Pettit and Fritz in the Netherlands. So nice. So um, we had to decide things like, what was the color of the felt? I chose green. <laughs> I had many choices and they kept saying, well, what you really want is green. Um, what I wanted was blue and they said, no, what you really want is green. So we went with green. Um, we got to choose the, um, the wood for the uh, batons. This is maple. And then I had to decide the pedal board layout. And this is called the smiley laid out. You really can't see why. Let's see what happens if I bring it down here. Um, you can sort of see that the Carillon pedal board um, has a slight um, smile to it. Let me get on the bench. So the pedals actually duplicate the baton. So if I push the lowest down here, you can see that the lowest is there. That lowest bell is the Borden bell. Sorry, the Borden bell. And an octave above. Unfortunately, I'm in a room because uh, these bells are so loud up here, you can't imagine. But the room does help um, keep the sound muted. And you can hear how long the bells continue to ring. They're still ringing. Now, playing the batons is interesting. I started out uh, when we first got the carillon and I had lessons, I was just terrible. <laughs> and part of it is. I look at these and I don't immediately see where uh, C is. Um, so the layout is exactly the same and you can see if this was a piano, um, if this were a piano, this would, these would be black, 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 and these would be the white notes. So if you play on the black notes, okay, and you play on the side of your hand.
Now, the lower you go, the heavier it is because this is pulling. You can see up there, that's the linkage. It's pulling a very, very, very heavy iron ball that strikes the, uh, the bell. So the larger the bell, the heavier it is. Whereas up here, they're very light. This is partly why the pedals exist because this low, the lower bells take so much weight and so the pedals give us the possibility of playing. <laughs>